you, Father, for this. We thank you for this time to gather together in your name. We thank you that we've been invited into your habitation. Yeah. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to do in each of us tonight in making us one with you and one with each other. So we now, we just enter into this ascension. We just count down on three and we just go through the door of the covenant and the blood of Jesus. And we just encounter you with all that we are. So we start in one, two, three. We step in now. Thank you, Barbara. Immediately, I saw a, 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 like a blue realm. I think I did that last week, too. I'm trying to look. But, yep, last week, same thing. I don't know what it is about this group. But... And I see us in a blue realm. A blue room? Yeah, blue realm. A like blue this, realm, okay. Yeah, this blue light. Wow. Is it like what um, I... night? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Gab. Go ahead. Is it like is it like nighttime there in that blue round? Because like when when you when she said one, two, and three after three, I felt like I stepped into some like a blue like uh, space. Like it was like nighttime with some stars and yeah, and and then okay. Yeah, oh, wow. that's yeah. good. See, okay. that's good. very good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I sensed this. I didn't really see anything. I felt this. Okay. And it was like I knew this. Like, like God stepped into my DNA. He stepped into my, my feelings, my nerve endings. Um, I, I would say my nerves. And, you know, when you say somebody's getting on your nerves, you know, that kind of nerves, like he stepped in that thing. And when he did, I felt like he sat down. Okay. And what I want to say about that is like, he inside of me said, this is home. I'm relaxing. Like, like I stepped into the father's house and there was this big couch and the God inside of me sat down and said, this is where you belong. And I felt everything inside of me relax, rest, and just feel like, like I let my hair down. I, I could take a deep breath and relax and say, whew. <laughs> just let go of all the burdens and and i felt the um i'm home i'm i'm where i belong yeah i fit i you fit it yes you do yes that's so that's what i felt i love it i felt that like we went into a space and something that robert said earlier where we we're in the outer court and god wants us to come into the inner court and i felt we were stepping right into the right into the center to the holy of holies but it, it wasn't like a quiet small place like you sort of picture it from the yeah. temple you know <laughs> it was a big space and it was so fest it's so festive it was very festive in there everybody was like welcoming and I could I could sort of sense angels and the cloud of witnesses and like everybody was in there just hanging out and we just I felt like we were so welcome like it was yeah well come on in yay you here you know that sort of thing that's what I sensed love that I love that that's awesome that kind of relates to that feeling like I belong this is where I'm, yeah. I'm welcome yeah, I'm exactly. here I'm yeah And the word Zion came to mind when you were talking about this place, you know. Thank you, God. What does Zion mean in Hebrew? Does anybody know? You can look it up. Okay.
Okay. Zion, also variously transliterated Zion, Zion, or what or just different words, but it is a placement in the Hebrew by used as a synonym for Jerusalem as well as for the land of Israel as a whole. Maybe there's more. I'm not sure. No, that, yeah. Um, I think we could just add this to it as well. Utopia. Um, oh. There's also fortress or citadel. That makes sense too. Yeah. And it, and it also called the holy place. And um, I don't know why there is. Um, Mountain. I was, I was reading up some other stuff, but um, whenever I hear the word holy, it just is magnified. The Holy Spirit's magnifying this in me is it's a place of impartation of his salvation. It's an impartation of of his wholeness inside of us it's like i've i've invited you to the place of becoming whole i've invited you to a place of becoming healed i invited you to to come to a place where in a lot of ways where you belong yes where you fit where, you're yeah, where you fit oh that's good <laughs> that's good I always thought of Zion as the place where God's name dwells. And so that would be his, his character would be, you know, at home there. And yes. if we're there, then we're in, the, in him in that oneness we were speaking of later as entanglement. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's also the name is the place of the, the wedding, the marriage, the, the union, um, that, that we talked about earlier. And it's also, we come into the reality of, because of the marriage, we come into that place of, of uh, being first, uh, you know, to, be, to experience his first love, you know, to experience that reality that we're the first thing on his heart, that we come into reality that we're the beloved. And there is also that word first, means one which is that same reality of he's inviting us into that one singular wholeness oh yes who do i feel the spirit of the lord thank you father I wonder if we're in the realm of Zion. Let's ask the just, Lord. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Father, we just ask that you just make it clear to us where we're at and what we're experiencing. Show us what the blue room is. Show us what Zion is. God, we engage with you. We at, yeah. You've shown us something. We acknowledge it. God, we just ask that you would just make it more real to us, that you would explain it to us, God. We, we come to you hungry for more of what you're showing us, God. We thank you for that. I think it was Gabby that was saying that about the the blue room and it being like sort of like the galaxy where you could see the stars and the sky you know wow. and um and when i saw this I like it was a huge vast place and and i feel like god was showing me how big god was like like he filled the space like it 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 took every bit of it to for him to feel like he's even bigger than that you know but but it was like the entire vastness was filled by who God was. And then I sensed we came into union 
with that God. And I felt us expand yeah. to where he was, how wide and how vast and how, how wonderful and great. And, like, and I just felt like we were, we were expanding and almost exploding into a, a new reality of who we are and who we are as his children and, and with his DNA and stuff. I, I think I interrupted somebody when they were getting ready to speak, but I just felt that. I was I was just going to say that I'm sensing everybody is here in this space. Not everybody on this call, like everybody. So I said to the Lord, like, what everybody? Everybody in the whole world? Everybody in the whole, who's here? I mean, there's a vast amount of people here. And the Lord just said, everybody. He's not, he's not explaining further who everybody is. But I have been sensing that this is like an outer realm. You know, you get wheels within wheels, realms within realms. I'm mm -hmm. sensing this is an outer realm, like one of the, uh, for want of a better word, the large, a larger realm, like all-encompassing. Like there's smaller realms within this, but this is the large realm which goes to with what Robert was just saying about the vast expanse. And then I feel that everybody is here. Um, in some form, you know, I'm sure you've heard some people say that we, you know, we can be two places at the same time, we can be 10 places at the same time, we can, um, I don't know what they call that, but well, if we're in God and he's omnipotent, then we have that, right? It's a bit far out, but I think you understand what I'm saying. So this is a place where everybody's spirit is. Past, present, future, everybody is here. And that's all God's telling me, everybody. I'm saying, who's everybody? <laughs> You're like, everybody, everybody? everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And that goes along with oneness as yes. well, because oneness in him, we're also one with each other. Yes. I mean, that's a whole new frontier for us to really explore. But that's just what came to my mind as well. Yeah. One of the meditations I had last week is when we were, it was like we were in Christ before the foundation of the earth, mm -hmm. you know, before time began. And then I saw at the end of time, it wasn't just each of us individually, but it was nation by nation by nation with everybody in it that had survived, um, was also in a oneness with, with Jesus. And I thought, oh, this is what it means for him to be the Alpha and the Omega, that we are all in him. And it's just like when, you know, when he, um, when he put the rainbow in the sky, that yeah. in the time between Alpha and Omega, we become different spectrums of the rainbow. But in the end, we all come back to converge into him. And that's part of the meditation I got when I was asking Jesus. To come meditate in my mind. Wow, wow. I go, wow. <laughs> I mean, and there's the scripture, you know, when we were just celebrating Feast of Tabernacles, where it says, All nations will come before, will come to Jerusalem before the king. And then I saw that, oh, this is where, oh, at the Feast of Tabernacles, that they might um, honor him and then receive rain something like that yeah and then i saw also this is where he's our head and then the body is the church that he has formed through the covenant and where the body and the in the and the head get connected and it's all becomes one i thought oh my <laughs> this is too big <laughs> too big too big but those are the kind of thoughts I've been thinking since I did what Robert said. I hope you're journaling. Uh, some of them I got mm. down. Some of them are too big. <laughs> um, I don't have language. Even what, even what you just said, 
kind of makes me understand what I'm seeing and feeling now is the, okay the blue room the vastness seeing him fill that whole area and then you know seeing us expanded into that and all that I kept saying what is this place what is this place what am I seeing why is it so big and you know mm-hmm. huge and then um and, and it encompassed everyone and it encompassed everything and then you said we are connected to the head and God kept saying to me, this is my mind. This is Ooh. my mind that you're seeing. You're seeing my mind. And, wow. and, oh, and, and it's like, we are in the mind of Christ. We are, um, we have the mind of Christ, you know, and, and what, Ooh. what I love about this, when I heard Kirby talk about it, he said, it didn't say you have the mind of Jesus because mm-hmm. Jesus has the reality of of God being man, he said, he, it specifically says you have the mind of Christ, which when it gets down to the fullness of it, it says the anointed one. And then it also gets to the fullness of saying, I am that I am. You have stepped Mm -hmm. into the mind of the anointed one. You have stepped into the mind of I am that I am. And, and it's like, you're, 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 connected to something that's way bigger you know and it's not like his mind's in us we are in his Mm -hmm. mind you know we are beholding and and god i'm asking right now meditate through us right now we allow you to meditate through us god in our subconscious inner thing just you meditate your word meditate everything that your thoughts your heart your mind you know um just allow us to to experience that even now as we're as we're abiding in you as we're habitat uh, 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 having habitation with you god we're having visitation with you god in your heavenly realms make this real to us god god let us be super seers let us be able to supersede into the mind of christ let us be able to you know let us experience that realm of authority that 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 realm there god let us go into this place as we see all this god let it become the birthing center let it become the place we encounter the the reality of what you want to bring forth into this world and what you've already brought forth into this world god we thank you for that you know because it says before something can come forth it has to be envisioned and so yes. that happens in the mind. We get the vision. So, Lord, we just invite you ah, to plant your visions through us, in us, around us, in all of us. Woo! You know, another thing that, that uh, I came across my mind, I was listening to a song, and I was listening to someone talk about it a little bit, but it was talking about Jehovah Jireh. You know, we used to just say that Jehovah Jireh uh, uh my the god who provides you know but the actual translation is the god who sees the god who gives us like he sees it through but he also he envisions it he envisions it you know and even the word provision has the word vision in it you know it's like god providing goes through this reality of i want you to see it so that you can birth it forth and that, that's the reality of who Jehovah Jireh is. He's saying, I want to give you vision in the midst of your lack and your pain and all these things so that you can see my provision being provided. I am the God who sees for you. I am the God who, you know, allows you. I'm, basically, he's the God who meditates through us to, to release his reality, burst forth what's in heaven into the earth. Because that's what hope is. That's the hope is the substance of things we cannot see in the natural, but we envision them in a form of a promise or something that needs to be birthed, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Now you're going to just get me to go in some other direction here. When God spoke to my heart, he's been just raining in my heart about this. And he's saying, Christ in you, the hope of glory. God keeps showing me, he said, I could have said Christ in you, glory. But he said, no, there's a process of coming into my hope. 
coming into my vision, coming into my meditation, coming into this reality. And he said, if you follow the process of Christ in you, producing hope, that, that meditation, that vision to see what he's doing, he said, then the next step is you step into glory. And, and it's like God is saying, we've tried to step into glory and not go through the process of hope. And, and God is just showing me, he said, this is the season I'm leading my people through hope. I'm, I'm establishing hope inside of my people. I'm, I'm releasing my mind, my, my vision, my dreams, everything inside of them. It's the birthing center. Yes, and we have all been growing in hope, haven't we, as a nation? Yes. <laughs> this is so rich, you guys, what you're talking about. So good, so good. So good. And I feel like the hope is what's expanding in us. Mm-hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. it's just expanding our borders. It's going beyond us. It's the price that I was talking about. Like, you know, if I could just stay in fear all the time, then I felt safe or felt comfortable with something that I was familiar with. God is saying, no, you can't fear anymore. You have to go into hope. You have to go into this place of, of love and boldness and, and, and realize God's in control, you know, that, and, and, be willing to see what you couldn't see before or didn't want to see. Yeah, that we need that process, don't we? It's vital for us. God, I just ask that you just hope through us. Yeah. God, that, you, that you meditate through us, that you you habitate through us that you god I, even as um she was sharing it earlier god just be our confidence yes. live confidence through us you be the confident god inside of us live as confidence inside of us god we give you permission to be our confidence, to, to explain and show us what true confidence is, God confidence is, God. Be the confidence that we need and we desire and that, that we should have. Be the hope that we should have in all areas, in our identity, in our, in our work, in our, in our faith, in our, our realities as sons and daughters. Be that confidence, be that hope inside of us, God. Thank you. Robert, I think that goes back to that habitation because we have to mm. go up, we have to go up and uh, enter in to the habitation of God for our hope to be enlarged. And then as our hope is enlarged, we begin to see things from uh, God's perspective. And that's what gives us confidence is to be able to see uh, the circumstances of things from his perspective instead of uh, you know from ours that are so limited by our experience our past experience and so lord we just thank you yes, that god. this is like the birth canal is what i'm seeing yes, god. Hmm. that you know there's contractions as you go through the birth canal and we have to uh, submit to that um Squeezing. energy yeah <laughs> that pressing yeah yeah is. and it's like it's when you said the pressing it's like bringing the the wine out of the grapes you know mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have to squeeze the flesh out of our being so we can be mm. fully in the spirit and then we're in habitation with the holy spirit so wow i'm gonna just take a moment and just do something that's just in my heart. I'm just gonna flow with what I get in my heart, and it's yes. God, I just I magnify you as the God of confidence in us. Yeah. I magnify you, God. I worship you as the God of confidence. God, mm. I magnify you as the God of hope, the God of dreams, the God of visions. God, yes. God, I magnify you as the God of meditation. 
the one that meditates through the, the, the areas inside of me that, that haven't even been unlocked yet, God. God, mm-hmm. that you're the one that meditates. You go into the secret place of my life. God, that you're the meditation. We magnify you as the meditation over our, our strongholds, our bondages. God, you, we, medita- we, we release you and honor you as the God who meditates, God. God, we, we, um, we honor you as the God who who is the God of habitation. God, you're, we honor you as the God of habitation. God, we honor you as the God of visitation. We, God, we honor you as the God who sees through us, God, that, that mm. envisions and ends provision, God. We honor you, God, in this place. We honor who you are in us. God, we honor you as our hope. We honor you as our, our, um, uh, our beloved God, the beloved God, we honor you as the beloved God. We honor you as the one that that's the lover, God, that we honor you as the one who teaches us even how to love and to make you first, God. We honor you, God, in this place. We honor you as the expansion. We honor you as the mind of Christ. We honor you as the the one who who opens our our eyes to see God, seeing God. God, we just honor you as a glorious wonderful loving god we we honor you as the god of intimacy Mm. we honor you as the god of 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 affection and kindness we honor you as the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end we honor you god we honor you as the as the one that makes us whole and complete. We honor you, God. We honor you. Thank you, God. Yes. Did we honor the hope in him? Did you say yeah. that? You had that. I'll do it again, God. We no, honor no, the can't. hope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like doing it. So. <laughs> yeah. I like it when you do it, too. <laughs> God, we just honor. We just honor you as hope. We honor you as the God of glory and hope. God, we yes. honor you as the one that hopes, the God of all hope, the God of all hope. God, just I, I feel like you're just tearing down our bondages and tearing down our, our fears, and you're the God of hope. You're, you're the God of hope, God. You're the God of, of peace and love, God. God, you're the God that... That, that removes all the fears and the worries, God. You're the one of hope and love and peace and union. You're the God of union. You're the God that, that, that makes, makes us whole, makes us one, God. You're, God. you're the God that's crazy about us. You're the God who wants us. You're the God who loves us. You're the God who kisses us. You're the God who is just passionate about us. You're the God who just, your love, you're, you're, you're the crazy, outrageous love. Wow. Yes. Oh. <laughs> wow. wow. Ooh, really like, like stirred his heart. Wow. <laughs> well, I see angels handing us these these huge like flower buds. And I know they're going to open. But right now she's handing us these huge flower buds. We're just holding them with both hands, looking at them. I was just about to say, I saw flowers being handed to us. No way. I was, I I mean, I I was getting ready to say it. And then you said it. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. (laughs) Oh, wow. I'm going to, I'm going to take it deep breath into this wow fragrant mm. flower bud I just feel like as we're just smelling the flowers it's just like the senses our senses are coming alive 
like like a, an awareness that we will be different. Yes. Wow. Just breathe it in. Breathe it in. God, I just feel led to pray this, God. I ask and I just see and believe that you're doing this, God, that you through your mind, through the mind of Christ, you're going to reveal what you think about us. That each one of us would get a different revelation, a fresh reality of what you think about us. That you will Mm. blow our mind, you will blow our spirit, our soul, our body, just blow us out of the waters. And that you would just cause us to see what you think about us, God. Mm. You would reveal your heart, your mind. You would reveal... God, let us be able to see that. Give us the faith to grasp it. Give us the faith to, to, to actually reach for it where, where we may have, we, we probably haven't thought that way, but we would have a mm-hmm. new revelation of what you think about us, God. Mm-hmm. You know, and I feel like also I'm sensing that these buds, the fragrance that we each get. Mm-hmm are his, all these things that uh, we, we have shared about him, all the things that Robert declared that what they, what they are to us. And even if like, we can't, I'll just talk for me. Often I cannot put my, my thoughts into words, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter when you inhale this intoxicating fragrance, Mm. all those things are, you're being reminded of all those things, even if you can't put it into words, Mm. just the fragrance of it. You know what it is, you know, in your knower, you know, in your spirit, what these things are. Mm. So by faith, Father, just breathing these things in, Mm. I am receiving it. I feel that the Lord's pointing to me, that's pointing out to me that every fragrance is unique and it's unique for us and about us. It's not like a re- generic flower for everyone, you know, it's not a restaurant flower, (laughs) you know, it's every every bud is it's 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 about the scent every bud mm. has a scent that's unique to us and, yes. and, it, and it reflects the uniqueness of each of our individual relationship with god because he 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 relates to us each on a different level on a different way um no better or worse than any other but just uniquely so it's about the uniqueness of this and when you first said flowers i i actually it's the first time i've actually smelt in the spirit which is a weird weird concept and i said god i can't there's so many smells here i can't pick up the sense and it was because each one is unique yes Mm. that's so good yes It actually leads me to just tell a story of earlier this week. I was I was getting very frustrated that um, in my meditation and in my quiet time with God, my mind wanders so much. You know, I've got classic monkey mind, and yeah. not only <laughs> meditation, I'm just I'm just uh, you know I tend to be a bit ADHD in conversations, and I flip from one conversation before I've even finished the word of the one conversation. I, flip to another idea and I was asking the Lord to say Lord help me to rein this in and and to focus and everything and I heard him say to me why I'm in your every thought and it was getting back to the union with him it's not like I have to focus on God to access him we are one so if my if my thoughts go down all these different rabbit holes every couple of seconds it's actually okay because he was saying, I'm with you in every thought. And he said, I might even delight 
in your random way of thinking. And that was a huge revelation mm. to me. And that really, really set me free. I knew you'd like that, Anne. <laughs> Love that. It's so true, though. Of course it's yeah. true, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I could just sense that he was saying that he loved that about you. <laughs> That's wonderful. I was inhaling and I just felt like dancing and all of a sudden I felt I was twirling and then entwining with the flower bud even, becoming one with the flower. Well, it, that makes a lot of sense to me. It makes a lot of sense to me because it's the essence of who who he says we are and, and our feelings towards him. And it's a, it's a mix of all of it. Are you doing with all this, Gabby? Okay. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Naomi, how are you doing? I am really enjoying this. Um, I meet a lot of Christians who are always trying harder. Um, and I speak to a lot of Christians who are doing things for God, but not often do we really pause and just really dig into worship and seeking his presence. So I'm really, really grateful for this session this evening. It's like hitting a reset button for me. Yay. It's so good. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Ah, wow. It's funny as I'm sitting here in my office speaking to the computer with all of you, right? So I see myself in, in the realm, the blue realm, and I also see myself floating, floating up on the ceiling of this room, <laughs> just with the intoxication of him and all of this. I had a sense that after I got entwined with the flower, yeah. that the flower started carrying me somewhere. And I don't have, I wondered if anybody else has any sense of being transported. I just wonder if we're supposed to share this with the realm of earth or something. Oh, I, you know, probably I would say that 99.9% .9 of the time we do. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just felt like that urge was sending me out, you know, into the vastness and i was wondering where am i going where am i going <laughs> then i thought oh i can't be afraid i'm in the confidence of god <laughs> <laughs> i love that yes <laughs> but i i'm being transported somewhere um well, it's funny oh sorry go ahead go ahead go ahead no, 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 no. go ahead um what came to me was if um if God isn't 
bothered by my ADHD and actually likes it. Um, what else have I missed out on? What, what other things do, is, is he in that I didn't really have any idea about? So it's like, if, if, if he can tolerate my ADHD, what else? There's other stuff he likes that I didn't even know he liked about me. That's right. Nice. Yes. It's kind of like wide open now. Yes. It, it it's took, awesome. Yeah. It broke those borders, didn't it? Broke those, mm. those self-inflicted boundaries, huh? Yes. Amen. That's so good. I, I just have to share something here. When I kept, you know, like smelling my flower, I kept seeing you know, there's just certain things about me that, you know, I like, but there's some things I like, like maybe look in a mirror and they'll be like, well, I don't like that about me, you know, or something. And I yeah. maybe subconsciously didn't like those things. And as I was hearing, like Anne talk about the ADHD and, and then Avril talk about, you know, how her mind will jump from different things, you know, and all the, the different things that I was seeing all these things that I felt like I didn't accept about myself and 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 I felt like God was just soaking his love like this revelation where I asked you know God reveal to us where you love us in a way that maybe we couldn't accept that we needed to take faith to grasp and and be able to see this as I was seeing all this and I kept saying is this really what you're focused on God is this really what you're showing me and I was seeing all these areas where I didn't like about myself myself and I felt like he was just really loving these areas like he was mm -hmm. like it was a revelation of saying that he really is thrilled about these things you know these unique things about me and then early on when we started the ascension I felt that part of me that sat down and said you belong you fit yes and, and I feel all those areas that I haven't accepted, now God is saying, I placed them in the place they fit. Ah, yes. All the things that we haven't accepted about ourselves, and God is saying, I love them, <laughs> but they're also they fit. Yes. Like they, they got placed in the place where they fit. And I don't know, that's just doing something to me right now. Yeah, I get it. I love that. Gabby, did you did you have something? Um, well, yes, actually, um, you know, earlier when we started, I did see a flower, but I didn't say anything until um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Who was it that mentioned he saw a flower? So, um, so I actually saw a flower, and um, but it was an edible flower, and I just like it was candid to me too when I ate it, Good. and it tasted like uh, like some like candy. It was sweet. Well, I I can't like you know I wish I could <laughs> physically taste it right now but yeah <laughs> and then um was it Barb that mentioned like ascending I um or traveling or translating yeah like when like right before she said that when we were when you guys were talking about the flower um I saw myself like just me uh sitting on the floor and um sitting like just with my my legs crossed and then like in a meditation mode and then I saw like, um, like the father, like, like me on top of, like was on the floor at first, but then I saw me on top of the father and he was ascending me higher up to the sky. So it's interesting that Barb mentioned that. Yes, it is. I love that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I want to say that. I, I don't know why I'm seeing this, but you're saying that the father and he was sending up higher. I want to see this father daughter relationship and it was almost playful like he oh, was wow. throwing you in the air and having fun with you <laughs> and um but it was like lifting you up and you know it was it was honoring it was fun it was like an intimacy between a father and a daughter and maybe it's a restoration for you you know i'm, I'm not real sure but i'm sensing that there's something to this and that God is revealing his love to you, even to the 
to the subconscious area inside of you that he's restoring something. Wow. Thank you. I received that. Amen. The subconscious is so powerful in our daily lives, in our entire lives. Yes. We that never is- escape it. We really don't. Yeah. No, we don't. We don't even recognize the influence that has either. That resonates for me, Robert, because when I was just a baby, my father was throwing me up in the air and it dislocated my, sh- my shoulder or something. But it caused a real conflict between my mom and my dad. And that came up more and more uh, as I was growing up. You know, I got more and more aware that they were... Uh, resenting the uh, occurrence not that my shoulder was dislocated but that my father was not recognizing oh i don't know how to put it in english father i just received that as restoration yeah and redemption Mm -hmm. of that early early uh experience father that it's it's being something of honor from you i thank you lord i just received that I'm also getting the sense too that that for both of you and probably for other people that that reality of the 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 playfulness is going to create a different like atmosphere of habitation with God. It's going to create a a relaxed atmosphere. It's going to create an atmosphere of you don't have to earn it. You can rest. You can you you feel like you belong. (laughs) You feel like you know, a lot of times, sometimes people say, well, you know, I know God loves me. Does he like me? Does he like me? And and I feel like this is like a, a relational thing that will, where you can just come and sit in his presence and feel this acceptance, feel his approval, feel his love. And, um, uh, you know, that I, it's the thing that, that God has keeps saying to me is that, um, you know, I know, I believe, I believe that you love me. I believe you want me. And there's this, just this pull that I feel from God where he desires me. He desires me. Not what I could be or what I think I should be or try to be like someone else. He desires me. He wants me. And um, for some reason, I just feel like that's for some people in this group. And I want to add to that, he delights in us as well. Yes. We, we, we bring him pleasure. He delights in us. That, that was huge for me when I had revelation on that. Because I was one of those, well, I know you love me because you're God, but do you like me? You know, and he said, I delight in which was just revelatory for me. Yes, he does. I just feel it. I've been getting the word fullness for a while. like Fullness, okay. Mm. Were you going to say something, Barb? Yes, I just felt like that was really uh, something that I needed to hear because I had head knowledge. But um, when you're talking, I could I could begin to sense it. And that's something I haven't had from my family relationships when I was speaking earlier. I was willing to bury them because they didn't know how to love one another. And so I thank you. But um, That's something I have to look forward to more that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And it's real. Yes. It is real. Engaging in heaven and ascending in heaven. One of the realities that it's done for me is um, uh, for my majority of my christian walk god was teaching me some things that just seemed so off the wall and i was like what is going on and i tried to share you know and it just wasn't being received and i felt like what are you doing god you know and it meant so deep it was just deep 
it meant something to me what what he had been sharing to me and it was touching my life but and there were glimpses here or there but i walked around and i felt for years as if i was the square peg trying to fit in the round hole and i just didn't fit i didn't fit you know an even greater revelation tonight that i feel like I feel that place where I belong, but this has been this reality of he's making me realize I fit, I fit. This, you know, I found the place that where I belong, where I, where I habitat, where I, you know, where I, I'm at home, I abide, you know, I, you know, this is where my DNA has connected to the DNA of God, but I'm also finding that I'm connecting in with the DNA of of other people yes. that are brothers and sisters and you know the connection is there and i mean it's been so healing to my heart you know uh and, and i'm not saying i've had bad church experiences but it's just i would leave some days and go why am i so different from everybody else why is it so different from me and and i feel like it's the the queen esther reality where it, I just sense this, like this reality that's over me and says, you've been created for such a time as this. And, um, and, and I really feel like I, I fit, I plug, I found the place where God has put me, you know, I don't know how that relates to you guys, but it relates to me huge. Awesome. So Barbara, have you landed anywhere in particular? I don't know, but I just started shaking real uh -huh. like I do when Robert was talking. And I thought, Lord, what's all this shaking about? And I just felt like it's shaking off all the restraints yes. that I've had because I grew up, you know, every time I would try to share something, it would offend somebody. Mm -hmm. And so I, I used to just try to keep it real tight so I could squeeze through and not not bump into anybody and cause yeah. them to get upset. And I just feel like all of a sudden I just expanded and the love just flowed in. So, wow. <laughs> so I don't know where I landed, but I sure do like this. Yes. <laughs> I was Ooh. getting that sense earlier when you were saying that like you were being transported to, uh -huh. you know, like another area. I kept feeling like you're going back into some areas in your past where you were hurt okay. Okay. and God was going to take you into that place. And he was going to reveal his love to you in those areas. Like he was, like he was revisiting it. Like he was re establishing yeah. it. Like he was like, it was like he was recreating your past. Well, you you know, know, we think is... our past is stuck yeah. where it's at and God's been showing me. He said, no, I can recreate your past. This relates to what I did with my family because that's what I was trusting for my family when I buried him in Christ. Yes. And this is what's happening to me from what you said. That's it. It's recreating um, our old man into something brand new. You know? yeah, that's Woo. Good. That's good. Where we <laughs> learn to love ourselves the way God loves us. Yes. Oh, wow. It's okay to like yourself and love yourself. It really yeah. is. <laughs> but I want to do it God's way. I don't want to exactly. do it the way I try. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. 
Thank you, Lord. Oh, he's such a good father. Mm. I just wanted to read a scripture that I read this week in Psalm 139 from the Passion. Um, verse, I haven't got my light on here, I think it's verse 5. It says, you've gone into my future to prepare the way, and in kindness you follow behind me, to spare me from the harm of my past. Don't you just love that? Yes. Yes. That's so good. Thank you, Father. Now you talk about going through a process. David went through a process, didn't he? He went through a process. But just think of how he worshiped God through that process, you know, yeah. with all the Psalms we have. Yes. He covered every single human emotion, I think, in those Psalms. I think he did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think he did. And I think those were the, the very words that Christ was praying to when he was here on earth. I just want to honor God as the God of restoration. Yes. I felt like saying that earlier and I didn't. So I just want yes. to say it now. I just want to honor you, God, for the being the God of restoration. Yes, Father, we honor you for that. We honor you for being the God of restoration. Good, God. Thank you. There's, I think it's a scripture that says that, um, I think it's like a prayer where it says um, that our meditation would be acceptable in his sight, you know. Yeah. And as I was saying it slow and just kind of meditating over that, and I felt like God was showing me, you know, I see him changing my meditation, but then it was like he went from the word meditation to acceptable, like he started to emphasize it's acceptable. And it was like, there are so many areas in, the, in my normal meditation where I don't accept myself or I don't accept my past. I don't accept you know, what I felt about myself, I don't, and, and I feel like he's saying, pray that the meditation of your, of, of your heart would be acceptable in his sight, you know, and it was like, he's, he's just releasing something over me that, that's bringing an, an acceptance, and even, maybe even an acceptance of others, too, but, but, but I just sense that there's something that, that, that uh, that acceptance, that grace, that mercy, that love, that reality, that ability to grasp and accept God's goodness and accept his love and accept his kindness where I guess at times I judged myself. And um, I don't know, it's just like releasing his justice, releasing his mercy over him. I think he's doing it with most of us tonight, if not all of us. Could you, you know what? That was hard for me to hear. Could you say that again, Afro? I just said, I think he's doing that for all of us. Yeah. Most of us, if not all of us tonight. Yes, I agree. 
This was in uh, Psalm 104, I believe. Um, in verse 34, let my meditation be pleasing to him. As for me, I shall be glad in the Lord. That's one of them. And I used to read that and I felt condemned because I would measure my meditation up to what I thought he would be pleased with. <laughs> and so since I've been doing this this last two weeks, it's totally changed my attitude toward meditation. I love it. But that was Psalm 104, verse 34. 104, 34. Mm -hmm. that, that even seems to go deeper than the word, the way it translation I said, instead of just being acceptable, it seems to be like a reality of that would be pleasing, that, that, mm -hmm. that, um, that actually bring pleasure to him. Yeah. You yes. Know? Oh, the one you were talking about, Robert, is Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So that one's the one that has acceptable in it. That's good. I like them both. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> now that you gave me a positive attitude toward it, I love them. I just kept sensing his closeness being near to me. And then it's like he was looking into my eyes and he was looking deep into my eyes. Like he was going way beyond what normal people could see in my eyes. And, <laughs> and he was seeing the pain. He was seeing the, the through the DNA. He was, but he was lovingly looking into my eyes and I think there's something about that is also going to cause me to have that different perspective, like, like what I've seen in life, like viewing it totally different, like going through a pain or a memory and seeing it a certain way and reacting to it or triggering to it. And then, and it's like all of a sudden seeing him look into my eyes, I feel like, going to look at things differently and see hope and see something different see it in a different way and a different perspective yes life is going to change the filter in which we interpret uh everything that we're seeing you know it's going to be in a positive that's not because the pain um distorts our perceptions of things we don't even realize it because it's so familiar. And it just opens up and expands brand new. Um, huh, positive <laughs> energy, positive energy. Yes, <laughs> thank you. That we've missed out on before, you know. Woo. We need to remember Not that he's looking at us through his eyes, mm -hmm. but we can also see through his eyes. Yeah. And I hear the word. I hear now superseer. I hear him saying superseer that he will make us into superseer. So we will see even others will see the hope, not the not the lineage of their sin, but we'll see the hope. We'll see the the visions. We'll see the we'll see their identity. Just 
just before I got on the call, I was praying over a number of uh, students that I pray into, and that's exactly what he told me. <laughs> to pray is to see beyond their behavior and how they see themselves, to see Christ in them, you know, that, that they will be able to see that too. I thought, wow, so we can do it for ourselves as well. Thank you. You are muted, Anne. One time the Lord gave me this word of knowledge and it was a title of a book called Vision Science. You probably remember that, Jill, because I talked about it forever, for forever. And the, the author's last name was Palmer. It might have been Stephen Palmer. It'll, I'll put it in the chat later. Anyway, that's the nature of vision in and of itself. You know, you know how it flips, you know how the, the, we looking at something, but then it flips in our brain. And do y'all know what I'm talking about? Vision's weird like that anyway. And I was just saying, I was yeah. thinking to myself, God's going to flip this stuff for us. You know, like we think it's bad, but then he brings perspective or his take on it. And, it, and, and, he, and he flips, literally flips it. Well, that's how vision is anyway. It's a flip you know, yeah, like it comes in and then it has to flip. And our, anyway, there's a correlation there. And um, it's cool. That's really good. That's rich. That's good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> in our retina, we see everything upside down and then our brain has to flip it over. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, but maybe God's going to do it so we'll see it straight on. We don't have to do the flip. <laughs> you know, it'll be direct. It's like what Robert was saying when he looks directly into our eyes. He can change, you know, all the nerve, um, the directions and how the nerves function so that they, they don't have to be flipped up and down in order to get to the brain correctly. We'll see things more truly. Hmm. that almost makes me think of like dyslexia you know how mm -hmm. things are like twisted but as you're seeing that i can almost see them like he was doing a creative miracle and the dyslexia that we have in the spirit or the dyslexia we have in the soul or dyslexia we have even in the natural like he is rewiring it mm -hmm. rewiring it so that we perceive a totally different way and yeah. and i see that it's really going to diffuse um it's going to diffuse the way the enemy had lied to us like the yeah. lies the venom is going to go the the thorns are going to be removed the the thing that like that and you're going to see the lie for the lie you know and and be able mm -hmm. to see the truth and and what god's doing also reminds me that one of the armors that, you know, when we put on the armor, one is the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. And the, it's also, I think it's in Thessalonians where it, it, it's called the helmet of hope also. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and what God has been showing me about that is that this reality to be able to see and meditate, allow him to meditate and all that. It's actually part of putting on that helmet. It's the helmet of salvation, where the word salvation ultimately means the helmet of wholeness, the yes. helmet of hope. You know, we're talking about God restoring our hope, you know, like he's putting on that helmet, which is covering our mind. He's like reprogramming our mind. He is, he is totally um, encompassing us into his mind and he's releasing that mm -hmm. wholeness. He's releasing that 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 he is meditating through our mind and rewiring it so that we perceive what he's perceiving you know yes and, and, and it's go ahead when you were talking about that is he's he's rewiring it so we can perceive the fullness of the truth you know because when we have deception in there yes. from things we believe that aren't accurate that filters out part of the truth and so when he rewires it, because we've looked into his eyes and he's looking through our eyes, we're going to see a fullness 
of truth that we've never seen before. Mm. And that's what you're calling wholeness, I think. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It came to me as fullness. That's good. I love that expression, um, spiritual dyslexia. <laughs> yeah. it, it's just so good. It's just yeah. how yeah. we just read things wrong and we just miss them and we read things backwards and everything. We can spiritually, you know, and I, I just love that. It's, it's so graphic for me. It's part of the super seer that you talked about, Robert. Yeah. Super, perspective. Yeah. super perspective. Super yeah. perspective. <laughs> I like what Ann said. It's the rest of the story. That's good. And I like that super perspective. And I also love the word super consciousness that's good that's good so have you all still got your flowers you want to describe them. What have you done with them? I know Bob was dancing with hers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I put mine in my garden of my heart. Yes. And Gabby ate hers, which is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds crazy, but God had me put them in my eyes. Like in your inside, physically. In physically inside of my eyes. See, see how that's now we've been talking about eyes and seeing things and uh huh. That's good. And, and I'm inhaling mine like that's how I'm taking it in. That's how I'm consuming it through my nose. <laughs> <laughs> inhaling it. How about you, Ann? Is that my um, name? Um, I have mine. I have it like my rose like this. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that that was great. I love it. <laughs> Is it a rose? <laughs> How about you, Naomi? I didn't have that vision. That's okay. I haven't been following that one. Okay. No worries. <laughs> It gets easier the more you practice. Yes. The more you do it, yeah. the more, yeah, just like anything. Is there anything that Naomi or Gab, Gabby may want to share that they haven't shared that, I mean, I'm not going to force you or anything, but, um, or put you on the spot, but if there's something, sometimes I feel like, ooh, I'd like to share, but I'd, maybe didn't feel like it was the spot but you know i'm just opening the door if you guys did have something to share yeah i just really appreciated um just this time of just delighting in god and just being and just listening to you guys be excited about him um because sometimes i find that i do this on my own in my own prayer time but not often are there other people to like really listen to their excitement about god and I was just so blessed like this was so refreshing for me today and um uh next week wednesday um i'm supposed to be preaching at a youth uh youth uh convention in cayman on prayer and i'm doing the opening night so i'm just i'm so blessed i feel so grateful that god provided me that opportunity but right now I'm also just completely seeking God in prayer. And like tonight has been such a delight for me to just relax and just feel um, just present in adoration versus anything else. So I'm just completely like absorbing everything you guys are saying and just being with God for me today is just, um, 
it's just so wonderful. I can't, I, I can't even describe all of the ways that it feels wonderful. That so blesses my heart to hear that from you, Naomi. Me too. Me too. I, I don't know why I just have this sense too, is that just as much as it was refreshing for you, I feel like it was refreshing for God. So good. Yes, Robert. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just felt like that was important. I've heard that two or three times. This whole ascension is that he has enjoyed time with you. Yeah. Probably, you know, I think you may be experiencing just some of the emotions that he's feeling also. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I've been getting this word just in different places in the last week or so. Um, different sermons have popped up on my YouTube and different random words that I've seen on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, so many people are sharing, it's okay to pause, it's okay to slow down, it's okay to um, not move ahead on some things, it's okay to just wait. And so, mu so much of it is just you know, just relax and just wait and just be with God. And um, another sermon I listened to, the preacher was saying, uh, today we're just going to be in adoration. Today we're just going to love on God. And it wasn't a thing where he was, you know, going all in into preaching, but he was going all in into just really seeking the presence of God. And in his congregation, they were just worshiping and they were praying and then healing started to break out and all kinds of all kinds of wonderful things that they didn't plan and I was just so refreshed by that but sometimes it's okay to just um be with God in adoration and in love and just like God does everything else yes he does yes he does it's exactly it <laughs> it's exactly it's it yeah it's kind of come full circle now uh-huh uh, we kind of started peeking into this or, you know, early on. And, and now to me, it's like, you just summed it up perfectly. Um, and this is incredibly refreshed me. Almost didn't even come on tonight. Just, <gasps> just, I'm going through a really hard time right now. And I just really needed this. This just mm -hmm. really, straighten some stuff out in me so good yeah to get to get his perspective uh, yes exactly yeah. yeah super perspective oh, that's, <laughs> just, it feels like it's excellent i mean it's just the spirit of excellence is being done just yes. i don't know why i just feel like i speak excellent he's just doing a thorough work thank you god At one point in listening to everyone speak, I was like, what am, what am I really doing sometimes in my interactions with people or in the things that I busy myself with? Like, what am I really doing? Because it feels like I'm not truly seeking the best of what God has in some of those things. I'm not really seeking the fullness of him. Like I can be in the same situation but just be in the same situation with a different perspective. Yeah. You know, really God good. doesn't ask us to do much, except he asks us not to fear. He asks us to rest over and over again. Mm -hmm. He asks yeah. us not to be anxious. He asks us not to strive. The yeah. only thing we're allowed to strive for is to enter the rest. Yes. Absolutely. That keeps it simple, doesn't it, guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine God is telling us to strive to do the thing we <laughs> we strive to leave. <laughs> it's the <so> opposite. <laughs> that dyslexia <laughs> again. Yeah. Virtual <laughs> dyslexia. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. uh... Oh, that was good, Naomi. That that's really good how you saw that I've, I've heard yeah yeah he's saying you you just said that we are striving say it again that we strive to the rest avril is saying that um he tells us to strive to enter the rest yeah yeah 
And sometimes my to-do list and my expectations of me or my day is like striving to leave the rest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so true. That's so good. Don't y'all, we can't forget that. That's really big. I know, right? Uh... You know, when, um, when Robert said, uh, when he was praying just a few minutes ago about the spirit of excellence, um, my something my mind was like spirit of excellence as relates to like you know ascending with Christ. Mm -hmm. Usually, like in the church, we hear the spirit of excellence having to do with like what Naomi was just talking about, like striving, yeah, you know, being exactly. too busy. Yeah, and so it was kind of weird to have weird to hear him say spirit of excellence as as it relates to ascending or being in God's presence. I was like, oh wow, this is different. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. Truth. That's good. Yeah, it's truth. Yes. Yeah, that's a that's a spiritual dyslexia, right? There, there you too. go. That is, that's good. That's so funny. That's good. Y'all um, type these type these in the chat. These are big. Yeah. This has been so wonderful tonight. So rich. Yes. Well, I am going, unless anybody has anything else, I'm going to turn off the recording. Any last words? Jill, I just feel the need to release it somehow. I don't know. So did, that did he show can... you any way? No. <laughs> okay. I just feel like, you know how the fragrance, yeah. we're talking yeah. about inhaling the fragrance. I think it has just to release the fragrance. <laughs> So it can float down wherever God sends it in the spirit. So did you just do that? Or do you want to do it officially? I just, <laughs> I, I just came up with that meditation. That's song. good. No, you, you flowed with it. That's perfect. Yeah. So Lord, we just, we come before you and we just yes, thank yes. you for what you've invested in us tonight. Yes. And we just mm. want to share it so others can benefit from what you've shared with us. And so we just release the fragrance of the yeah. flowers that you have given us tonight, Father, that they will just saturate and penetrate and um, recalibrate the, the thoughts and the minds and the meditations of the hearts of those you send it to. Father, we just release it to those that you have chosen to enter into this super seer realm that Robert mm -hmm. and Jesus does do. <laughs> yeah. By invitation only. <laughs> yes, God. But it's available to all. Yeah, to all who desire and seek it. The invitation yes. of their own heart. Yes. yes. God, mm -hmm. we release that invitation that they would yes. habitate and uh, yes. experience the visitation of you, God, and 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 yes, in the earth, but also with them visiting and habitating into the oh, heavens, yes. God. Oh, yes. Make it make that a reality, God. Make that a reality. Release that into the earth. Release that that invitation to come up higher. Release yes. that invitation for people to to experience the ascension, to experience the depth of what you're doing, God. And and from there, allow them to be super seers. Allow them to experience mm -hmm. that intimacy. God, we just birth it forth right now. Father, yeah. we thank you, God. That what you just said gave a new meaning to a being a living sacrifice. Yeah. You know, that's a sweet aroma to his you know, in his nostrils. I thank you, Lord, that you will just call many into this. Yes, Father. Reality of habitation. Yes, God. That you might have a sweet aroma uh, to enjoy every day. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Just want to add and pray. Lord, let us carry our own unique aroma that we have. Let us yes. carry that with boldly with ex full acceptance and with full love
for ourselves. In, mm. in your confidence, Father. Mm -hmm. In com full confidence, which is fully yours, Father. It comes from you. Let us remember that, Father. I thank yes. you that you call it to our attention. That uniqueness comes from a mixing of him and us together. Mm -hmm. yes. And that brought, that brought me back to the Zion, you know, the, the place of his habitation, that Zion, uh, word Zion came up just as you were talking about the uniqueness. Yes. Because there is no other place where God puts his name. Father, we, 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 Zion is the place where God inhabits and he inhabits us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you guys feel like this realm is Zion? Is the realm of Zion? Yeah, I do actually. Okay. Now that yeah. now that we've come full circle, I, I yeah. feel that. Mm. <laughs> and it is and like, as I first said, it's like a, it's the outer ring. It's it's I don't fully say encompasses. Yeah, it, but it's a full. It's a whole thing because yeah. it's it's God in union with us, and us seeing Him and accessing Him, and. Him, we access each other in this world. Mm, yes. Uh, the truth is we, we do access it, each other. Again, it's our mm. attention is turned towards that. We're seeing that truth, that mm. reality. Mm. You know, we know Holy Spirit Father speaks a lot in pictures. Mm -hmm. And so he shows us truths in these meetings, in these engagements that we have. You know, by seeing it, sensing it, sharing with one another. So it becomes very real. Like when somebody yeah. goes, do I have to draw you a picture? Well, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and he does. <laughs> and I'm very thankful for it. And remember, we can come back and access this place anytime. That's right. Yeah. It's there anyways. Mm. The door is open, so it's easier to come back. Yeah, yes, it is. It is easier. There's no doubt. And what, let's see. Anne, you wrote something. Let me read it for the recording here. It says, Anne says, and we inverse the spiritual dyslexia as we enter back into the earth realm. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we thank you, Father, for this. We thank you. We love you, Father. We bless you. And we thank you for blessing us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen.